Now, sir, it's nice to have you here, and I just want to recall one line the president said last night. Cancer has no immediate cure, basically saying that ISIS is like a cancer. Uh, do you think that there is any cure for ISIS with the current strategy of this White House? Absolutely not, Thomas. Absolutely not. You know, I can't think of a time in our nation's history when an American president has appeared so small and irrelevant in the face of such global challenges. What the American people are looking for, what I was looking for last night, uh, was, some, uh, was some sense that the president understands the gravity of the situation and, and the need for a strategy uh, that, that goes after and kills uh, these people, ISIS. Uh, and, and he did not articulate that last night. And it's, it's very, very disturbing. And I can tell you the calls that I'm getting today from my constituents uh, they're more concerned now than ever. I know that uh, you had put out a statement saying you were disappointed because part of this speech last night was used to stump for gun control, lecture Americans on the importance of showing compassion and tolerance uh, to Muslims. But Congressman, when we come to the topic of gun control and we look at massacre patterns in this country, schools, clinics, churches, army bases, movie theaters, shopping malls, now an agency for the disabled, isn't it common sense to evaluate who cares what these extremists are, whether they're mentally challenged or religious zealots? They have too much free and easy access to build an arsenal to go massacre Americans in a movie theater or a center for the disabled. Can't we do something to make it a little less easy? Thomas, you know, uh, California has some of the most rigorous and strict gun laws in our nation. And yet these terrorists were still able to acquire their firepower that they used in that tragedy, uh, that tragic assault uh, that occurred recently. And, and I can tell you that I don't believe that restricting the rights of law-abiding citizens to keep and bear arms is going to stop that problem. We have a mental health issue uh, that's, that's a part of this, and we are addressing that in Congress and have been working uh, with our Democrat colleagues to begin trying to address that. But, sir, uh, how do you stop the Farouks? They were law-abiding citizens until they weren't, until they exactly. decided to get their hands on weapons that they were able to get across state lines or however they were able to get them, but they were able to amass these types of arsenals, military weapons, to have in their garage and in their townhouse. Uh, that's exactly so my how do you, that's exactly my point. Thomas. How do you that's how do you exactly secure Americans in their own homes and in their own neighborhoods to let them believe that their neighbors aren't someone to suspect that we can have a right to own a handgun or a right to protect ourselves? But well, why do we need jumbo clips? Why do we need to have these semi-automatic rifles? What's their point for that in a hunting society? Who needs it? Well, Thomas, I will tell you that we're not talking about hunting. We're talking about the Second Amendment. And when you look at the verbiage of the Second Amendment, it says that the rights of the American people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. You don't get any clearer than that. It's, it's emphatic that the rights of the American people to keep and bear arms is a guarantee under the Constitution of the United States. Then should we limit, the, the, amount the, uh, we limit the amount of ammunition they could buy? Can we limit the amount of ammunition? You just made the point, even if we limited the ammunition, Thomas, they're not going to comply with the law. They didn't comply with the law in California. And then you're going to have defenseless Americans all over the country that don't have the capability to, uh, to protect themselves. The, the criminals, the terrorists, they're not going to follow the law, whatever the law might be. So going to a gun control debate in the light of where we are, what we need is a president that will go after ISIS where they are before they come here. We know now that, that, that Farouk and his wife were radicalized. Where did that come from? That didn't come uh, from, uh, from Marietta, Ohio. I can guarantee you that. It came from the Middle East, that radicalized element, uh, the, the Islamic fundamentalists there. But That's we could say that Christian, Christian ideology encouraged Robert Deere to go to the Planned Parenthood in Colorado Springs, or a racist ideology encouraged what happened in Charleston, that that community had to live Thomas, through with the Mother Emanuel uh, Church. So we can ally the blame to a lot of different radicalized human beings for whatever reason, but from your point of view, and just specifically about the president's point, gun control, limiting those on the no-fly list from having access to buying weapons. Your opinion of that is what? 
The, the no-fly list is a, we've seen what the IRS does when it has free reign to target American people. That no-fly list is a big list, and we have no idea how people get on that list. I can tell you that I've had a number of constituents. I've even had family members that have shown up on that list, and I guarantee you, Thomas, that they're not radicalized until the administration can guarantee us that we've got a no-fly list that is legitimate. I mean, they can't even, they can't even vet uh, the Syrian refugees that are trying to come into America now. The FBI director himself has says that they cannot do that. So how do we know who's on that list? And how do we know that that wouldn't be used to keep other law-abiding citizens from getting, uh, uh, from uh, exercising their right uh, to keep and bear arms? So I will, uh, I will acknowledge to you that there's a lot of work. We've got to address the criminal element. We've got to address the mental health element, and we've got to make sure that this kind of firepower is not in the hands of criminals and, uh, and, and terrorists. But I don't believe attacking uh, law-abiding citizens' Second Amendment rights is the way to go about doing it. Sir, I really appreciate your time.